he was the kind of person who would do anything for anybody. Brett Simmons, your typical 23-year-old, just graduated college and getting ready to start his life. He was just a go-getter. He, he was very motivated. His dad says he could have done or been anything he wanted to. He breezed through school, star athlete, you know, breezed through college on the dean's list effortlessly. Until all of those plans came to a screeching halt. I never forget, you know, the, 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 the sound of like horror and. The night of September 25th, 2014, their quiet Lancaster County home turned into a scene from their worst nightmare. Two men broke in through a basement door and went straight to Brett's bedroom. The door started opening. Like, and I looked and there's a guy coming out and he had like a hood, black on, his face was covered. He looked over his shoulder and reached over his shoulder and shot me. At this point, James hadn't made contact with Brett and despite being shot, was trying to hold the shooters down. I was scared. These guys, that's the only thing I can tell you about seeing in their eyes, they were scared. But they pointed a gun at him for a second time. I still remember the flash. I, I still, I mean, I saw the flash come out of the end of the gun, like right in front of my face. I still don't even know how he missed me. He let go and the shooters ran out of the house, drove away and left him there to die. I was on my knees and I was holding my chest here. While James was fighting for his life, his youngest son went to find Brett. He said, he said, oh my God, I think Brett's dead. And he said, Brett's dead. And I just remember my wife just said, what, you know, and she's like, and I was just, I don't tell me that. I said, no, no, don't say that. Brett was shot twice, the second time right to his heart, killing him instantly. They could have took anything out of that house. It could have been replaced. They took the one thing that couldn't be. <laughs> After what felt like an eternity, the night ended and the investigation began. The district attorney and police chief say they interviewed every person mentioned to them and almost everyone in the family's social circles. We have talked to um, over 160 individuals, maybe up to 200 individuals. The DA says there were drugs found in the Simmons house, leading them to believe this may be drug related. The police chief says whether drug related or not, he does believe this was a targeted attack. There were some uh, drugs in the house and we do kind of a working theory was that this was somehow drug related. I don't know that. We don't know that. But that's that's really, you know, we're getting into somewhat of speculation. Stedman says after a while, investigators hit a brick wall. We need help. I mean, these are the kind of cases I think this is, is solvable. We just kind of need a tip or a break and it could be just one small thing. For Simmons, the nightmare never ended. He lives it every single day. And just destroy his life, they destroy all our lives. He says he knows he'll never get Brett back. It's been tough though, man. I miss his laugh. Uh, I'm, I miss everything about him. But he could get justice for his son. If they're still walking around or whatever, or even if they're in jail, you know, it's just not even fair because and my son will never get to enjoy anything again in his life. And he says if those people are watching or if someone knows something and hasn't stepped up. I hope it haunts them until the day they die.